Some of you out there in the cleaning industry probably see some crazy things with the floors you're going to maintain. One person that's seen these crazy things is Bob Blockender. He's the owner of Blockender and Company. Bob is an expert flooring inspector. Hello, Bob. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. Bob, I know you're a pretty busy guy. You do volunteer work. You are past president of NICFI. You volunteer your non-fishing time to the industry. I assume you're a fisherman since you live in Florida. <laughs> uh, yes, I am. Good deal. And you do committee work with the uh, IICRC and work on the inspection division as the chairman of that. Well, the reason why we're getting together today is Bob and I were at the RIA convention recently and was telling me about this case, a uh, carpet that he was inspecting. And it just seemed like something we should talk about and share to the industry. So uh, tell us about that, that particular inspection, Bob. What did you see there? The, um, the flooring was a woven wool in a hospitality location, and it was part of a series of uh, multi-thousand yards of carpet that was installed as a complete service with a uh, manufacturer. And what was happening was they used a frothed foam pad, I gotta say that slowly, and uh, it had what, what they call in the carpet industry sweet oils. I don't know exactly what they are, but I'm assuming it's maybe a soybean based type of additive so that the padding can get a green label to it in the world that we uh, you know want to approve buildings and the green of everything. So <clears throat> what happened was the, the, the padding was installed on, on a concrete with a, uh, uh, a I'm going to say a multi-purpose that will bond with a froth foam pad. Then the carpet was attached to the foam pad with, a, again, a multi-purpose that was uh, specified to work and make a bond between and make a bond between the carpet and the pad. About six months to a year after installations, I got a phone call from the manufacturer that he's got four hospitality locations in, in Florida, South Florida. And uh, a few days later, I get a phone call. There's one in Orlando, one in Tampa. And I don't know how it got there, but there was one in Hawaii. And it all had the same problems. So they sent down a tech from, uh, from Dalton. Him and I went to two sites and reviewed what was going on. And then uh, a few weeks later, they sent another expert from, from Georgia. And we looked at two more sites. And the end result was the pad, uh, the oils in the pad a lot seeped out or wicked out after carpet cleaning. And everything was a hot water extraction system, uh, portable truck mount, and what I'm gonna call a sit-on machine because uh, one room was probably about 10,000 feet. So the, the problem that happened was the carpet was overwetted. It, uh, the water did seep through into the, into the uh, adhesive enough that it, it uh, allowed the breakdown of the adhesive. And then as people were walking on it, on the wet carpet, let's say for banquet setup, and of course the, uh, the, the sit-on machine was also, which weighs a thousand pounds without somebody on it, uh, through the weight of that and the, uh, the turning of the front wheel that was a steering wheel, the piv pivotable action created pressure on, on, the syst on the flooring system. And through that, the foam pad acted like a sponge. When you squeeze a sponge and put it in water and it sucks it up, then when you squeeze it, the water comes back out. So this uh, up and down, I'm gonna say vertical motion, uh, allowed the sweet oils to wick through, attack the adhesive, and the next thing you know, we had the carpet was no longer bonded. Now, as far as what we did for correction, after we identified the actual cause, which took a few weeks, uh, some of these locations we went in, I had a, a installation company uh, that went with me. The carpet was lifted easily, like it was not even there. It was like it was a... a, a a, a lay down installation or loose lay installation. And what happened was the solids of the adhesive stayed in the backing of the woven goods. All the 
I'm going to call it the vehicle or the water and other liquids were gone. And they were gone because of the sweet oils from the pad. So we were able to, uh, this one club that we did had, I'm going to say maybe 2000 square yards of carpet in it. We actually lifted everything without any damage to the carpet or to the pad, removed the pad, replaced it with a, with a dense rubber pad and re-glued everything using a top of the line Taylor adhesive. From that point, it stayed. No more problems, no more troubles. And the maintenance uh, was so somewhat reviewed and corrected so that everything was not over wetted. And that's really the gist of the story. Um, on the, uh, as far as the one in Hawaii, uh, that was all replaced. The one in Orlando was replaced and Three of the clubs that we went to were replaced because it was a failure. It was a failure of uh, installation systems and cleaning systems and specifications. So this type of thing, everybody comes to the table to make sure that uh, the end user is happy. Well, so this is not something you can predict. Obviously, this is the first time you saw this in your what? You've been doing this a couple of years. Yeah, I've been doing it a while. But I, I started doing this when uh, I had blonde hair and a full head of hair. <laughs> yeah. That's... And uh, yeah. So the thing is, uh, this is one of the first times this specific type of scenario happened because one thing, the sweet oils was the main problem. The second thing was the overwetting. And that's where some people who are in the cleaning business, you know, especially the, uh, the, the beginners, they think, well, more is better when actually more is not better. So uh, the recovery of the, of the uh, water is extremely important, the, the amount of recovered water that you get out of it. So you don't over wet and you, and you make sure you get, uh, I'm going to say, 50% of the water back out of the uh, carpeting. Okay, but let me ask you this. Who had to pay for all this? Because if I'm a carpet cleaner doing the work, I don't want to have to pay for that repair that I didn't know was a possibility. The, the people who paid is the manufacturer of the carpeting because they sold it as a installed unit. The uh, clubs and the, uh, the, the people who clean it were not uh, responsible. However, it is a ongoing lawsuit because I haven't heard uh, the end of it yet. And everybody uh, got went to the table with attorneys and they're suing the pad manufacturer. So would you say, Bob, that if a carpet cleaning company has an issue that's using someone like yourself to dig into it and figure out where the blame should go is a smart move? <clears throat> uh, yes, it does. Yes, it is. I, <clears throat> excuse me. I've been hired by carpet cleaners uh, over the years who have, uh, you know, have issues and, for instance, a sofa, I went, uh, this one job was a sofa and it was all spots and the cleaner was being uh, held responsible for damaging it. And we're talking one of these $10,000 sofas that you find in South Florida condominiums and these houses on the beach. Well, I went there, I interviewed the homeowner and I did my thing with the testing, the pH and whatnot. And then I take out my magic black light and the the, the homeowner just went, oh, my. Well, <laughs> she had a little dog. Yeah, I, I imagine I, I can envision what that light showed. On yeah, that it sofa. showed. The, you cannot argue with physics. Simple as that. And uh, so cleaners use me to find out if they are truly responsible, especially with uh, the woven oriental rugs that have discoloration of some sort. Um, it is because there's a lot of them down here, custom rugs. And uh, since I come from the cleaning side of the business, well, I can do a good job of that, of pointing out the exact causation. All right, Bob. Well, we'll let you get to your next inspection job. But thank you for sharing this information. It's something that might help others in the future keep out of trouble or at least know how to deal with these situations. And if you come across a crazy story you want to share in the future, just give us a call. I may have one. I call it porcelain crop circles. We did a recording on porcelain recently. I wonder if it's kind of the same issue. Uh, no. Okay. No. Well, when you're ready to talk about it, let's do it. 
All right, sir. I'll send you a photograph to uh, tease your mind. Okay.